Good morning, folks. We begin today at Soho Lasco C2, the coronagraph, monitoring plasma around the sun. We notice something unusual, a large amount of material funneling down into our star. We see these flows from time to time, but not usually this overt. For size comparison, here is what Earth looks like placed on this frame. We're probably talking about at least a half a million mile stream of plasma and charged particles. And since this is one of the most prominent of such events I've ever seen, let's look at what's happening on the sun right below that plasma flow. Turns out that a solar tornado, a vertically oriented plasma filament, was sitting directly beneath that inward moving plasma. In order for a filament to stand on end like this rather than lay down flat, there needs to be a strong magnetic field oriented up and down as well. Here, the tornado's field appears to extend straight out along the line the plasma had flowed into the sun. Fascinating. However, perhaps more relevant is the extremely long plasma filament sneaking onto the northern Earth-facing hemisphere of the sun. There may actually be multiple filaments comprising this larger structure. It is a very large rope and will present a CME threat starting today and continuing until the filament either snaps or no longer faces Earth. South of that, we had our lone eruption on this side of the sun. The small filament actually snapped and released away from Earth's position, and it was small to begin with. Pretty to look at, but no worries from this eruption. Solar flaring remains low, so let's see if the sunspots can tell us why. We've got new spots growing up north, but they are still babies and not complex or ready to flare just yet. The big grouping has the size and bipolarity, but the magnetics are spread out rather than interacting in close quarters. No surprise to have fewer flares right now. 24 hours of solar wind here. We had some high density readings, but that's fairly normal as speed drops away from a coronal stream. The telemetry is relatively calm, and so is Earth's magnetic shield. The coronal holes departing the disk could still have some streams on the way for today or tomorrow. And the next one is that same transequatorial negative opening we saw before pinched tightly by the coronal fields. We'll see how this plays out over the next few days. We've got a buoy in event mode in the Bay of Bengal. Too long of duration to be a submarine or boat, yet small enough to produce only minute disruption, if any. These are potentially seafloor shifts. This was the scene the last few days in Vancouver. Remember, the Pacific moisture flow has been coming right over that area, and it is likely to continue today. The primary weather node in the United States is this central low. That's the storm. You can also see that Pacific moisture flow continuing. Now, the upper atmosphere flows also show how the systems funnel down into the Gulf states, bringing cold, while the western warm-up has already begun. we got tonight's top watch zones here. North Atlantic low with a convergence inching in to the east. Also got a southern low still sticking around from yesterday with colliding air masses north of that in the center of the continent, which then flow north themselves. Turning on the precipitable water overlay shows higher potential in those exact areas. And finally, we'll confirm over at Weather Online and see the purple watch zones along those same lines as well. Really got to work to see the colliding air masses here. The flow out of the south is easier to see and it's meeting a wall of air bending around the Australian coastlines. Precipitable water overlay also confirms, but also shows a powerful convergence between there and New Zealand. It will reach the South Island tomorrow, but for tonight, watches remain as thunder, lightning and rain to the north. You're seeing the current conditions, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time. 255 in the West. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.